Uh, my name is Pedro Machado. I'm an associate professor and consultant rheumatologist at University College London in London, UK. And uh, I'm the chair of the Standing Committee uh, for Epidemiology and Health Services Research of ULAR. ULAR is the European League Against Rheumatism. So the, the COVID-19 pandemic caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus it is of particular concern for people with rheumatic and muscle skeletal diseases or those that are immunosuppressed in general. Whether having a rheumatic disease or receiving immunosuppressive therapy is associated with a more severe infection and a, a poor outcome was unknown. Now, to, draw, to address this knowledge gap, ULAR, in collaboration with the Global Network of Rheumatologists, Scientists and Patients, uh, the Global Rheumatology Alliance, we developed a physician-reported case registry of people with rheumatic diseases diagnosed with COVID-19. This has been a very successful initiative, and by the end of this week, we expect to have over 2,000 cases, case entries originating from 30 different European countries. And adding to this, uh, uh, there will be more than uh, 1,000 cases available in the global database, making a total of 3,000 cases worldwide in what has been an amazing effort from the rheumatology community and I'm really grateful to all the colleagues that have contributed to this effort. And just a few days ago, the first report of this international collaboration was published. This is data from the first 600 patients submitted to the combined ULAR and Gold Global Registry, and data that we analyzed and published in the Annals of Rheumatic Diseases. Now, we, in this, in this study, we aimed to identify factors associated with hospitalization for COVID-19 in patients with inflammatory rheumatic diseases. And we found that as in the general population, people with rheumatic diseases were older or have comorbidities such as cardiovascular disease, lung disease, diabetes, or chronic renal disease were more likely to be hospitalized due to COVID-19. Now, these are, findings are not surprising and very similar to what has been described in the general population. With regards to, this, to the specific drugs that we use in rheumatology, taking non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs and disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, some of, them, some of which are immunosuppressants, so these are drugs like hydroxychloroquine, methotrexate, biologic drugs, or JAK inhibitors, None of these drugs were associated with an increased likelihood of hospitalization, which was extremely reassuring. However, taking a, a, an oral uh, steroid dose uh, of 10 milligrams or more prednisolone equivalent, and prednisolone is one of the most commonly used steroids, and this would be considered moderate to high dose, this was associated with an increased likelihood of hospitalization. And again, it's a finding that has been described in other populations. And finally, a very interesting finding was that we found that patient, patients taking TNF inhibitors, so this is one of the biologic drugs that we use in, in rheumatology, so these patients were actually less likely to be hospitalized due to COVID-19. Now, I think it is important to highlight that this was an observational study. And what we describe are associations, and we cannot say they are causal relationships. This is a voluntary registry, and therefore we cannot capture all patients with rheumatic diseases diagnosed with COVID-19. And what I mean by this is that there is the possibility of selection bias and confounding by indication. And although we did, uh, uh, we did conduct multiple adjustments and sensitivity analysis, uh, this cannot definitely be excluded. However, it is reassuring that the results of the various models were always very consistent, and this is all presented in the paper that was recently published. So, in summary, this study described the largest collection of COVID-19 cases amongst patients with rheumatic diseases, with 600 cases from 40 countries. It provides, for the first time, 
information about the outcome of COVID-19 in patients with rheumatic diseases and it informs about risk factors for hospitalization. This study demonstrated that most individuals with rheumatic diseases or on, on immunosuppressive therapies do recover from COVID-19, which should, should pro provide some reassurance to patients and healthcare professionals. And finally, these results will inform the management of patients with rheumatic diseases in the context of COVID-19 and are for relevant to all rheumatologists and other healthcare professionals treating patients with rheumatic diseases worldwide. In terms of the conversations that clinicians and other healthcare professionals should be having with their patients and the, the implications of the, the results of this study to patient management. Um, you know, at the beginning of the pandemic, there was really a big concern that because we are giving these powerful drugs that block cytokines, and some of them are immunosuppressive drugs, there was a big concern that this could result in a worse outcome if patients acquired uh, SARS-CoV-2 infection and COVID-19, which is the disease caused by the virus. And, and this, these results actually provide reassurance that probably that, that is not the case. Um, so, you know, for the entire rheumatology community, it's actually quite reassuring to see this. And I think it emphasizes uh, previous recommendations from international and national societies that patients should not be stopping their medication uh, because of, they're afraid of contracting the virus. It could actually be much worse if they stop their medication because then the disease uh, 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 gets out of control and then the underlying this immune dysfunction that is a common characteristic in many rheumatic diseases and the, and the increase in disease activity that could have a much a more than the most positive effect than the than the effect of taking these drugs which apparently they're not making the, the outcome of covid-19 worse and in fact there is a possibility uh, that uh, one of the drugs um, might have some kind of protective role but again uh, this this was an association, and that could only be tested in proper and adequately power, uh, uh, powered randomized controlled trials. So, in, in terms of the next steps of COVID-19 research, well, specifically uh, with regards to using this database, as we acquire more data, we'll be able to look at less common outcomes. So, one of the things that we're planning to look at is is the the outcome of of fatality death and, and ventilation, for example. And also, as we acquire more data, we'll be uh, able to look at more granular things, low like things like specific medications, uh, specific comorbidities or specific diseases, especially the ones uh, that are less common. Uh, and I think in terms of COVID-19 research in, in, in general, um, obviously, the key thing is to uh, start obtaining results from uh, from randomized controlled trials, which are currently happening, and 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 these are trials of antiviral therapies, anti-inflammatory therapies, um, namely the context of severe COVID-19 and the, the context of cytokine storm, and obviously uh, the other key thing is is the, is the vaccine. Um, there are now probably more than 100 potential vaccines being studied and it will be really important to understand if those vaccines can indeed be protective and and, and safe to administer to to the to the to the population because that will be critical in terms of the management of this pandemic 